Hello and welcome to another video on sequences and in this video we're going to use what we already know about calculating the nth term and we're going to apply it to answer a few different types of questions on arithmetic sequences. So if we look at this first question here it says is 205 a term in this sequence here? Now there's a few ways we could work this out. We could list every term in this sequence all the way up until we get to 205 and determine whether that is actually in the sequence or not. That's quite a long, arduous process. So instead of doing that, I'm going to show you another method. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the nth term. So I can see that the difference between terms is 4. So it's going to start off with 4n. Now, if I write down my 4 times table, I can see that the adjustment I'm making each time is to subtract 3. So my nth term is 4n minus 3. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that equal to 205 and I'm going to solve this equation. So the first thing to do is to add 3 to both sides and I'm left with 4n equals 208 and now I'm going to divide both sides by 4 and I'm left with n equals 52. Now from this answer here I can say that 205 is in the sequence and the reason I know that is because I've got an integer here and not a decimal and in particular I can say that 205 is the 52nd term in my sequence. Now if we have a look at the second question, is 200 a term in this sequence? So the first thing to do is to work out the nth term. So the difference between terms is 6, so it's going to start off with 6n, and again if I do my 6 times table, I can see that this time the adjustment is subtract 2. So it's 6n minus 2, and I'm going to set that equal to 200, and I'm going to solve the equation. So the first thing is to add 2 to both sides, and I'm left with 6n equals 202. And now I'm going to divide both sides by 6, and I'm left with n equals, and I'm going to use my trusty Casio FX83 for this, 33.6 recurring. Now, this time, 200 is not going to be in the sequence because we've got a decimal number. We can't have a 33.6 recurring term. We can have a 33rd term and a 34th term, but we can't have a term number like this. So I'm going to write no for this one. And for this one, it was yes. So, last one, why don't you have a go yourself? So pause the video and see if you can work out whether 999 is a term in this sequence. So, I'm assuming you've paused the video and had a go. So, let's first of all work out the nth term. So the difference between terms is 9, so it's 9n. And now if I do my 9 times table, the adjustment I'm making is add 2. So it's 9n plus 2, and I'm going to set that equal to 999. Now I know straight away that 999 is not going to be in this sequence because I know that 9 times 111 is 999. But I'll solve the equation anyway. And as you can see, we've got a decimal here, so we know that 999 is not going to be in our sequence. So here it says which term in the sequences below is the first to be greater than 250? So if we look at this sequence here, we want to know at which term number does this sequence go past 250? So just like before, we could list out all of the terms, but that's going to take a long time. It's going to be a very arduous process. So first of all, I'm going to work out the nth term. Now I want to find out which term number do I put in here so that my sequence goes greater than 250. So I'm just going to put the greater than symbol and then 250, and I'm going to solve this inequality. Now we know that we can't have a term number that is 61.25. We can either have a 61st term or a 62nd term. Now the 61st term is not quite big enough. It needs to be greater than 61.25. So the first term to be greater than 250 is going to have to be 62 because that, that is the next integer greater than 61.25. So our answer is going to be 62. So let's have a look at this next one, and again, we're working out which term in this sequence is the first to be greater than 250. So first of all, let's work out the nth term, and we're going to set that greater than 250, and we're going to solve this inequality. Now you might be tempted to say it's the 32nd term, but here, remember, n is greater than 32. So our term number has to be greater than 32, and the next term greater than 32 is 33. because we only have integer values, so our answer is going to be 33. Right, the final one, which term in this sequence is also the first to be greater than 250? So the nth term, and just like before, we're going to set that greater than 250 and solve the inequality. So our term number has to be greater than 42.5, and the next 
integer greater than this number is 43. So our answer is 43. And we can verify these. So let's look at the top one here. Now we're saying that the 62nd turn number is the first to be greater than 250. So let's work out what the 62nd term number is to check that it is greater than 250. So this is our nth term here. So our 62nd term, we're just going to replace n with 62. And that gives me 253. And again, that is greater than 250. And we know that the term previous to this, well, if we're going up by 4 each time, the term previous to this will be 249. So this is definitely the first term greater than 250, so we know that we are correct. So if you like, what you can do is you can verify both of these to make sure that you've got the right answer. So just to finish off with, let's look at this question here. It says, here are the nth terms of four sequences, and it says, for each sequence, state whether the numbers in the sequence are always a multiple of seven, sometimes a multiple of seven, and never multiples of seven. So for the first one, sequence number one, are the numbers in this sequence always a multiple of seven, sometimes or never. Well, what we can do, first of all, is let's just do a bit of trial and error. So let's just write down the numbers in the sequence. So the first term is gonna be four times one plus three, which is seven. So that is a multiple of seven. The second term is gonna be four times two plus three. Four times two is eight, eight plus three is 11. Now, 11 is not a multiple of three, so we don't need to go any further. We can see that we've got a multiple of seven here, but we don't have one here. So we know that it's sometimes going to be multiple of 7. Now for sequence number 2, our nth term is 7n plus 1. Now instead of doing trial and error, if we just think about this, if our sequence was just 7n, well 7 times something will always be a multiple of 7, but here it's being shifted by 1. So if we were to do the 7 times table, or the sequence just 7n, we'd have 7, 14, 21, 28, 35 dot 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 we can see that these are always multiples of seven but because we're adding one it's always going to be shifted slightly and you can see that these are never multiples of seven because we're adding one each time so sequence two is never going to be a multiple of seven now if you think about think about sequence three our nth term is 14 n now we know that seven n is a multiple of seven Therefore, 14n must be a multiple of 7, because to be a multiple of 14, it has to be a multiple of 7. So we know that sequence 3 is always going to be a multiple of 7. Now, if we focus on the last one, now with this sequence, we can just list out a few of our terms. And again, we don't need to go any further, because we can see that we've got a multiple of 7 here, but we don't have a multiple of 7 here. So that is sometimes going to be a multiple of 7. So I hope you enjoyed that video and just notice with each of the questions that I answered, I always made use of the nth term. So I calculated the nth term first and then I applied that nth term to figure out the answers to all of these different types of questions. So it's really important to understand, first of all, how to calculate the nth term, but also using that nth term to answer a variety of questions. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.